concerned about Malone's antics and Malone's showboating it and I think Malone really got Greg hot at that last sequence. At the buzzer, Greg Ballard came over and hit Malone hard. Then he grabbed his arm. Malone says, hey, what are you doing? The game is over. Ballard, you know, was seemingly saying, no problem. We got control here. And he just held his arm. They walked away. Then Malone threw the ball back to Greg Ballard. That's when Greg Ballard took the baseball pass through it right back in Malone's head. All right, we have replays for our television audience here on the simulcast, and we'll take a look at this. The game is over. The Jazz win 103 to 100. The pass by Floyd to Ballard was behind him. Behind Malone him. picked it up. Malone went between his legs. Now, right now, the game is over. Two seconds, one second. The game is over. Ballard jumps on Malone late to tie him up. Okay, now they're tied up right there. The game is over. Malone... Pushes off at Ballard, throws the ball at Ballard. Ballard catches it and throws it back at Malone, and then we got into it. Now, Greg Ballard tied up Malone when the game was over. Now, Greg obviously is frustrated. I think it was a, a, a bad play by Greg, a bad decision to tie him up. The, the zeros were on the board. He got hot, and then they got into it. So they were a little bit both in the wrong. All right, second half action here. Larry Smith starts the fast break. Sleepy Floyd ends it with two of his 27 points. Smith pulled down 17 boards tonight. Now check out the outlet pass this time by Greg Ballard to Terry Teagle. Teagle flies for the hoop. He poured in 30 points off the bench, much to the light of the sellout crowd. Utah cut a 20-point Warrior lead to five in the fourth quarter. Then Golden State pulled away again. Floyd with a clinching drive right there. These two teams brawled at the end of the game. And the crowd, uh, yeah, they were terrific. You know, in the report card, I give them an A+. Plus. I think the momentum has, has changed. I think it has it's shifted. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, the, the thing that we got into in Utah it just seems to, seem to spur us on. It seemed to have brought us closer. It seemed to have given us uh, uh, more confidence. The, the game is 48 minutes long, and hopefully the fans will come out and get us picked up from the very beginning like they did the last game. It's great to be in the stands and part of them Wednesday. It was just, I've never seen this Coliseum so full of enthusiasm. The Warriors are really deserving of a whole winning attitude about the fans, and I was glad to be part of something that was really exciting the, the other night when they gave that type of support to kick the, uh, the, night, the game off that night. I could hardly hear myself when the other fans were hollering and stuff. I guess the crowd was really excited about the way it's going so far. Watching basketball in high school and college levels for many years, and it was the best group of fans and most noise I've ever seen here in the Coliseum. Wednesday night in the Coliseum Arena, the Warriors used a tenacious defense to beat the Jazz 110 to 95, cutting Utah's series lead to two games to one. Teagle, Terry drives, jumps, layup is good! The Warriors met the challenge down the stretch and lead by 12, and Terry... Tonight, we are live at the Coliseum Arena for game number four. Right now, the crowd was deafening in here on Wednesday night. They're picking up where they left off. Spotlight atmosphere. We greet the starting five for the Utah Jazz. Kelly Tripuca, their small forward, who scored a game high for them, 16 points after scoring a collective six the first two games in game three. At power forward, Carl Malone, who was greeted by boos, but he likes the boos. He thinks that means I'm good. They boo me. They know I'm on the road. That's great. Carl Malone, their top scorer and rebound, but a quiet ball game in game three. Only scored 15 points. At center, Mark Eaton, a tremendous factor in the series. Second leading rebounder and shot blocker. Point guard, John Stockton. For the injured Ricky Green, who is dressed and will play in the ball game. And also Bobby Hansen, their off guard for head coach Frank Layden. Hansen in this series scoring almost nine points a game. And Frank Layden does not have 
the turned up collar and the big nose and the big eyebrows tonight taking this ball game a little more seriously Jim they have to win the ball game they don't have to win like the Warriors do but they don't want to go back to Salt Lake City for a game five they certainly don't because anything can happen if you go to a game five and the Warriors will of course have won the last two ball games they will have momentum exactly. they will also have a lot of things going for them they believe they can win back at the Salt Palace and George Carl of course he wants to win the ball game but he would like to win this ball game by 20. 20. George Carl does not believe that all right Big ovation for the Warriors starting five. Rod Higgins having an extremely quiet series, only scoring 5.3 points a game. And small forward jogs out first at six feet seven. Rod in game three was held on also, scored just three points. Took just four shots. That power forward, Larry Smith, who asserted himself in game three. He scored 10 points, eight in the second quarter, but he had 17 rebounds, 11 offensive boards in 29 minutes. During the series, Larry boarding a 12.3 of all game. At center, Joe Barry Carroll, who played maybe his best defensive ball game of the year. A season high five block shots in that ball game. He also grabbed on 11 boards, scored just 12, but played a great ball game at center. In the backcourt, Sleepy Floyd, also a great ball game in game three. 27 points, 19 in the second half. Floyd scoring in the series a second leading 19.3 of all game. Then Chris Mullen, who has had a very quiet series. George Carroll talked to him at length this morning during the shoot around about trying to get Chris involved. Chris scored just five in game three, scoring just 6.7 of all game in this series. Warriors have dropped two of the first three, but they won the most recent game three here convincingly. They do not have the speed to match the Warrior backcourt. Look for Sleepy Floyd to try to start and penetrate early. He wants to get off to a good game. Jazz out of the traveling purple, trimmed in a little bit of gold, green. Warriors in their home white, trimmed in blue and gold. Jazz lead 2-1. If they win, they advance. Round two, take on the Lakers. If the Warriors win, we decide the series in game five Sunday back in Salt Lake City. J.B. Carroll wins the tip. We are under the Better than half gone by the Warriors, not scored yet. Here's Larry, that baseline. Double team, knocked away by Stockton, pulled back up by Larry, blocked by Eaton again, over to Floyd. Floyd throws right side, tipped by Tribuca and stolen. It's a two-on-one Utah by Mullen. Kelly goes in and scores a layup. He has both buckets in the ball game. Four-nothing, Utah. Maybe he's not been passing as effectively in the series. Due in part, a large extent, to the large guy, Eaton. Here's Stockton driving, jumping, a one-hander is good. As he beat Floyd easily there. Stockton's first bucket, his first shot. In this series, Stockton scoring about seven of all game. He's got to shoot more, John Stockton, in order to help this ball club. They need the scoring from him. Ricky Green gives him scoring. John Stockton has to pick it up in there. He shot the ball in game three effectively, eight times. 10 4 Utah. JB spins over Eaton. Good on the baseline. Seven footer is barely over Mark Eaton. They played almost seven of the first quarter. Hansen met by two Warriors over at Chapica for a three pointer. It's up off the rim and out. Rebound Larry Smith. Larry for Floyd. Floyd, left side, short. Left baseline, 20-foot, rainbows get! Purvis short, ignites the crowd with a rainbow. And the Warriors score two buckets in a row. Have it down to 16-10. George Carl plays Floyd with Teagle now. Mullen out of the ballgame after an over four start. Short, J.B. Larry. Eaton, double team. He's going to be called for no travel, no foul. A foul is on Joe Barry. Cheryl. Rebound on the Floyd. Here come the Warriors. Floyd, the left side, short, 18-foot rainbow. Good! Utah, 4.08 to play, first quarter. The Warriors back in the ballgame. Utah, 16, Warriors. He's got the elbow oiled up tonight, but one thing you bring in subs, it gives everybody a different look offensively. You get, you can't be predictable that way. Here's the inbounds to Eaton, top of the key. Big guy throws it up, a three-pointer, almost knocked down the rim of the basket. Rebound of the Warriors, JV, for short. Short pulls up, 20-foot rainbow again, off the rim, glass, tipped by Teagle, no good. Tipped by Teagle over to JV. JV now holds it, knocked away, pulled back down by JV, two-time. Now tipped by Stockton, finally back out to Floyd at last. Now Floyd says, let's set it up here. Warriors try and tie the ball game after a very slow beginning. They're back on the beam. Shot clock's down to seven. Short, left side by Bailey. Layup is off the rim. Good! Purvis short scores four buckets in a row and ties the ball game up. Mark Eaton made, made him change that shot. He could not put it up right-handed. He came back with the left. He was under control all the way. That was a terrific move. 
Warriors have scored 10 straight last two and a half minutes. Tie the ball game at 16. Here's Stockton, left side, eyeing the hole. Throws Malone. Malone over single team. Larry, it's up off the rim and out from 20. Rebound Joe Barry Carroll. Malone's taking bad shots in there. Five on five. Yes, Floyd. Cross pass right to Stockton. Picked up by Bailey Jim. Just telegraphed that, but came back with a nice steal himself. Floyd takes it away. Over to Purvis Short. 20 foot of rainbow over eating off the rim. Good! Oh, what a shot by Purvis Short! He had to go 20 feet high to get it over the Jolly Green Giant. Off the rim and in. I thought the drive was tough a moment before. That one was impossible. Purvis Short, I said before the series began, can win a series by himself. He may just win this one. He has scored five buckets in a row and six shots off the bench. The Warriors have the lead. Jazz shot clock's at three. It's at two. Stockton drives over to Eaton. Drop the ball. Shot clock sounds. Warriors have the ball. The Warriors wanted to take advantage of it, take it in bounds. The bench of the Jazz took the ball, threw it back into the fans, could not get it to referee Ed Rush. Jazz bench outscored the Warriors both games one and two. In game three, the Warrior bench outscored them 53-38. Early in this game, the Warrior bench outscores them 10 nothing. all 10 for Purvis Short. Short spins, tipped away by Stockton, and Stockton steals. Comes forecourt off his knees, he picks it up, drives, and a layup McMahon. Director of player personnel about the Warriors' upcoming draft in late June, the 22nd. Larry Smith missed his first free throw. Second free throw he makes. First part of the ball game for Larry. Warriors down by six. Stocked in the inbounds. Holds the ball. Never shoots. And the first half is done. Jazz led by as many as ten. The Warriors by as many as five. We break with the Jazz up by five points. Our score after two quarters from the Cubs. The win to stay alive. The winner of this series has the unenviable task of facing the Los Angeles Lakers. This is their last game of the season. They get to watch a lot of television. John Stockton has gone all the way at point guard tonight, starting in place of the injured Ricky Green, who's sidelined with a pulled hamstring. He is in uniform, but has not played. Earl Bailey starts the second half, along with Paul Malone, Mark Eaton, Bob Hanson, a turnover by the Jazz. Here's Sleepy Floyd. That's the best kind of basket when you get a uh, layup off a of turnover. Absolutely. They played 20 seconds of good defense in that series. So it begins now. Floyd, bumped by Stockton, knocks him down, goes in, layup, he scores! Left-handed, left side. He knocked down Stockton. Stockton wanted the foul call, never got it. Floyd, right up, and he scored. Sleepy has 13, 11-point ball game. 45 to play, third quarter. Here's Stockton, right side, Griffith. Watched by Teagle, smothered by Teagle. Nowhere to go, gives up his dribble. Inside him alone, a perfect short, double team, knocks the ball away. Great warrior defense there. Carroll for short, short right side. Right side, Ballard, 18-footer is up, off the rim, out, rebound, Teagle for a second shot, spins it away, over to short, left side, 20-footer, bingo, Warriors down, and he's fouled, and the foul is called. You have a crystal ball in your room at home? You called this, Jim. If the Warriors keep it up, this could be the ball game. And it was really a silly foul because John Stockton, the shot already was in the air. Purvis had released it. Stockton didn't even bother him with the foul from behind. And let me tell you, it's even more silly because that's four fouls on Stockton. Now, the Jazz may have to employ Hanson at point guard. And George Carroll, he's the scary thing to put the arm out. He said, please, don't make the basket. But it, it came up short for him. Purvis short makes his free throw. Frank Layden calls timeout. And the Warriors have the momentum now. 15,025 strong. And the Warriors head to the fourth quarter with a full head of steam. And a sold-out crowd. 18 for Hanson, 77 to 70. Floyd drives, jumps, he's fouled, he scores! Sleepy Floyd went left wing, right towards the lane, jumped, was pushed and fouled, and he scored a layup. Floyd has 15 fouls on Stockton, that gives him five fouls. Five fouls on Stockton. And I guarantee you, the Jazz cannot believe the continuation because I can't Stockton, it. it's a bad call. Stockton was fouling him way out early beyond the free throw line, and Sleepy took one last dribble. We, of course, thought the foul was going to be on Thurl Bailey. We did not see the contact. The basket counted, though. Well, let me tell you, Floyd makes the free throw. And now Frank Layden calls a timeout. In part, I think Frank wants to lay in that rush, and he should. Either it's a foul on Bailey and a three-point play. If it's on Stockton, it's no three-point play. It's a bad call. Warriors take it, though. Timeout, Utah. 10.47 to go in the ballgame. Game four. Great, but Sleepy Ford came right over the line. Not only came into the man. Floyd drives. Floyd jumps. Layup. Good! He went through three jazz. And the last one 
He scaled Mount Eden and laid it in. 77 and 75, the Warriors down by 15. Now have a two-point deficit. Jamaica drives, blocked by Carroll. They call a foul. Hugh Hollins calls a foul. I don't know if it's on J.B. Carroll. I can't buy it. They're going to call on, on, I think, Greg Ballard. Okay, it's not on J.B. because J.B. makes a clean block. Kelly Chapika drives. J.B. up for the block. It's a beautiful block. Who's the foul on? It's on Joe Berry. Carroll is for Hanson, Griffith, Chapika, Malone, and Eaton. And they have no true point guard out there. Here's J.B. Down by four over to Teagle. And the quiet game. Left side. Meets Eaton. Fires it up anyway. Good! Teagle beginning to become a little louder. That's a big bucket. His first of the ball game. He has three. His first from the outside, that's for sure. His first period. Here's Griffith. Driving all the way in. Scoop pass. Malone up for a dunk. Meets Larry. A foul is called. And Malone scores in the lane. Back over to Tubik. Inside. Eaton tipped by JB. Tipped again by Larry. Pulled down by Floyd. Here come the Warriors. Four on three. Floyd spins. Over to Larry right side. Knocked by Malone. A foul on Carl Malone. A foul on Carl Malone. And that will be his fifth foul. That will be five on Carl Malone. This could be a battle of attrition. The scoreboard says three. Hold on here. Hold on a minute. Check it. That is three fouls on Carl Malone. Eaton had four. All right. That's a big difference. Pardon me. Eaton has three fouls. All right. They Purpose wants a screen. Purpose wants a screen by JB. Right side. Never got it. Fired anyway around the rim and out. Rebound. Carroll the rebound. Knocked around. Back up. He scores. Left side. Joe Barry Carroll. An offensive rebound. Put back. We are tied at 81. And you see what happened. He came out, as he rarely does, to give a screen. It brought Eaton with him. Then he went to the hoop and it gave him inside position. Griffith drives. Layup. No good. Tip Hanson. No good. Or Eaton in front of me to tip. Rebound to short. Outlet pass to Floyd. Left side. Floyd drives, stops, drives again, comes down low, right side, Mullen, nailed. And nobody calls Turn a over number 27 for Utah. Floyd drives, jumps, hold him on that baseline, 12 footer is good. Chris Mullen. And you gotta love him seeing him play so well. He played a bad first three games, a bad first quarter, but he's come back. He has a great game going now, 18. 12 in the second half. Warriors by three. Hanson drives, jumps, layup off the rim. No good. Bailey back up and good. Purvis short didn't body Bailey. A tough matchup for Purvis in the glass. Bailey's bigger, stronger, and he scored on the putback gym. And a good play because he never came down with the rebound. Just went right up in the same flow, shot it in. Bailey has 14. Warriors by one. JB by Eaton. Jump hook is good. JB went in and said, no, I'm going back out. He backed away on the big guy. Put a hook shot. And JB now in the ballgame has 13. 86-83. That's the Warriors. Tough, that's five, with the exception of a Bailey in for Tripuka. Hanson, blown by Larry. Meets JB. Jump hook. Too much off the glass. Tip. Grab by Larry. Larry for Floyd. What a rebound by Larry. Floyd for court. Left side. Bounce pass short. 18 footer. Good. The rainbow. And the Warriors lead by five. What a rebound by Larry Smith. 90-85 Warriors. Short has 26. Floyd great. made some pass and Chris made some sensational catch. Not a great decision to throw it because John Stockton almost came up with it. Good decision to bring it back out by Sleepy. Run a little off the clock. Get Short something better. Right side. Shot clock at five. A pump fake. Fall away. 20 footer is good. Purvis Short has done it. Timeout, Utah. I mean, he's the Cinderella tonight. I mean, he can do nothing wrong. And nobody deserves it more than Purvis Short. What a shot there. Purvis has 28. Timeout, Jazz. 4-0-4 to play. Warriors lead 92. 85. Pressing, so the Warriors should get it over the top and take the shot when they have it. Hanson, top of the key, missed it. Rebound Floyd, out to short, bad pass. Purvis tracks it down, and he scores! A layup! It was a bad pass by Floyd, but Purvis ran it down. Caught it, came right side and scored. Purvis short, the hero tonight. He has 30. In that third game with four of them, excuse me, in the second game, so look for him short on the offensive end. Five, four, Purvis short drives, three, Rainbow is up, good! Nothing but net for sure to hit 32 big ones. Warriors by 7, 98-91. Here's Stockton right side. Over to Bailey. Gonna post up on short block by Carroll. Foul is called a charge on Bailey. The Warriors have the basketball. And Bailey's gone. 15 seconds, 14. Floyd, 13. We'll see you Sunday in Salt Lake City. Nine seconds. The Jazz will not foul. The wave of the white flag. Sunday at 12.30. It is game five. And we'll see you then, the Warriors Force Game 5. What a performance by the Warriors tonight. Sensational.
They were not on top of their game the whole way through, but George Carl walks off this court a happy man. He hugs Burvis Short, who played his heart out. Having what has been a very physical, hard-fought series, and in the wake of last Saturday's emotional eruption here at the Salt Palace, security has been beefed up. Extra police and security guards have been placed on duty. Now, at the end of game two, Greg Ballard and Carl Malone got into a little bit of a Donnybrook, and that has carried over. The people here in Salt Lake are still remembering and One thinking... One of the things I think about is the fact that uh, Malone got the bigger fine of the two here. I don't know what Ballard was possibly thinking about going over and grabbing Malone in that situation, but then it broke out with the fans, and George Kyle is not a guy you'd want to fool with. Pretty strong customer. Really gets into things there, and let's hope today that the fans stay in the seats. They let these players play because it's been a great series, and in game five, you want the guys to just show their great athletic ability in everything of basketball, nothing to do with fighting. Welcome to CBS Sports coverage of the 1987 playoffs. Today, it's first round action from Salt Lake City between the Golden State Warriors and the Utah Jazz. Now falls one game behind against Seattle in the best of seven. And hello again, everybody. I'm Tim Brandt. And what a story we have developing here in Salt Lake City. Should the Golden State Warriors win the best of five, it'll be the first time since 1956 that a team has won the best of five after losing the first two games. And working with me today again is Billy Packer. And Billy, Tim. the subject that is on everybody his mind here in Salt Lake, of course, is Ricky Green. Will he play? Well, I talked to Ricky. Yesterday, he didn't look like he was in very good shape. Today, he says he can go. This is a man that plays on his legs. He can run, but he can't explode. Purvis short, 32 points Friday night. Was that a fluke? I don't think so. You're talking about one of the most gifted offensive players in the NBA, but he's out with injuries this year. He came in the game, gave them an instant offense. Great outside shooter, penetrated very well. Look for him to have a big game again today. Jack Madden, one of the officials, he's still gumming with him over there. Well, I don't think officiating is what's caused in this run right here. The Warriors are just out playing him, and they've got a better matchup on the floor than he has. Carroll working on Eaton. Again, the first step, and he's by Eaton. He doesn't beat Eaton up in the air vertically. He goes around and beats him horizontally with those moves. Super run by the Warriors. Joe Barry Carroll now has 10 points, and it's a 67-51 Golden State lead. So that's the end of the first half with Golden State leading. And Pat O'Brien will be back with a credential at the half after this message. And the lead is 19. Malone banging down in there on Ballard. Stanley in the paint with a big basket. Now George Carl was, couldn't figure out how Higgins got confused in that defensive assignment. Ballard, good pump fake. He's Boy, taking them along to school right now. And Ballard and Carroll both are feeling the rhythm. Two minutes remaining in the third period. Ballard. Yes. Having a game. 19 point Warrior lead. No place for Stockton to go. And Griffith out here in the three point range. Teagle's got to keep an eye on him. One thing can bring you back are the three point jumpers. Good dish. Ballard with a touchdown. So that's the end of the third period with the score. Golden State 90, the Utah Jazz 77. The count is off. Floyd has the jumper, but it's short. Smith with that great offensive rebounding ability. Can't give Sleepy Floyd two of those. Now Golden State led by 22 points. You see the score now is 98-86. Tremendous comeback here by the Warriors. This is for three. Yes! Kevin Mullen just couldn't get there in time. He was worried about helping out inside. I said the Warriors. I meant a tremendous comeback by the Jazz. Again, the power offensive play. Stop can hit that shot. Nobody picking up on the switch. The lead is seven. Great comeback. George Carl was trying to get a timeout. Sleepy Floyd couldn't see. They've got Harris Carroll posted up. Nice play by Scurry back to short. One on the shot clock. And Smith with a great offensive rebound. 
Smith didn't have enough spacing to get that ball into Carroll on that last feed down in the low post. But boy, he has some kind of offensive rebound. Lead is six. Full court pressure. Good long pass by Sleepy Floyd down to the right kind of man. It's a great way to beat the press because there's no press in the world that can cover a man out on the on the baseline to take that jumper, and Mullen has the great jumper, so a good move by George Carl. Griffith again had the jumper, didn't take it, instead goes That's to Stein for three. Yes! <laughs> Golden State wants a timeout. They have one left. Spot. 30 seconds. Ten on the shot clock. Great penetration by Floyd. Scurry trying to battle. Is Larry Smith. What a rebounder. Ball game right there. What a rebounder. Well, the lead is five with 17 seconds left. Watch Larry Smith. Just gets positioned. Nobody blocking him out. Keeps the ball alive. And then he has that ability to spring up the second time. Anytime you find a great rebounder, he's a guy that can go up for the second one. George Carl watching the entire activity. Speaks for itself, doesn't it? Only one team has come from a 2-0 deficit to win the best of five. Foreman across the lane trying to get the ball to Stockton. Somebody better come back to meet it. They throw it away. Floyd gets away with a walk. It's tough to get that ball in if somebody's not coming back to meet it. There's Malone pushing. And what a comeback. Down two games to none. They come back to win the best of five. Only the second team in NBA history to do that. 118, 113, George Carl and Golden State. Quite a story. Joe Barry Carroll, the Miller player of the game. Miller is proud to present a check for $1,000 to the Multiple Sclerosis Society on behalf of Joe Barry Carroll. The offensive structure that really changed things around, particularly midway through the ball game. Eaton got in trouble handling him, and, and it caused Frank Layton to have to make all the adjustments inside. They just couldn't handle Joe Barry Carroll. Utah won game one, 99-85. They won game two, 103 to 100. Win it. Uh, I don't know how you explain those type of things, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad Malone did what he did. <laughs> that key to come back. I mean, we have to thank Malone for that. I mean, he gave us the motivation when he threw and hit Greg with the ball. I mean, he had the game one. If he had just walked out of the court, off the court, we'd have walked off kind of down because we lost. We try to let that pass. We hope it'll never happen again. You know, just emotion was flying and everything. But out of the game, we all shook hands and stuff. And they congratulated us and we congratulated each other. So there's no bad feeling. Hopefully